was 10 years ago when the Nisqually quake shook the Puget Sound region. The Nisqually quake measured 6.8 and did between two and four billion dollars damage. Remarkably, no one was killed. One of the scariest things about earthquakes is the lack of warning for them. While well, scientists cannot predict them, they are making progress in narrowing down the timing. King 5's Glenn Farley looks at how the science is evolving. Glenn. Well, it's evolving a lot of ways, and as you're sitting there watching me in your uh, living room right now, know that you're moving just a little bit, but you are moving, and scientists can now tell that. Now on our seismometer here at King TV, everything is quiet. But wouldn't it be nice to know when the next quake hits? Well, that still seems to be a long way off, but we're learning more all the time. When the Earth moves, these antennas move with it. Ten years ago, during the Nisqually quake, there were 20 of these. Today, there are 450. And they're all talking to these computers on the campus of Central Washington University in Ellensburg. With this moved right now, that would show up. For sure. Rex Flake has the job of installing a lot of these antennas. They use the global positioning yeah, system and are only part of the technology. It boggles my mind all the time, too, and the satellites are moving at great speeds. So this is the coast of Washington, and everything's moving, uh, you know, roughly an inch a year. GPS antennas on the coast tracking that movement, the land being compressed relative to the GPS antenna you just saw in Ellensburg. This makes the GPS measurements a very powerful tool in terms of forecasting the size and the location of future earthquakes. Tim Milburn is a seismologist. A Southern California native, quakes in his home state were one thing. But this animation prepared on a supercomputer at San Diego State University shows what happens when a magnitude 9.2 quake rips from the southern part of British Columbia along the Washington and Oregon coast and finally ends up at Cape Mendocino, California. And the total amount of duration of shaking in this case is about 380 seconds, which is uh, uh, about s just over six minutes. This would be like the monster quake that hit Anchorage, Alaska in 1964, or the quake and tsunami that originated in Indonesia in 2004. And we can see that spring being compressed. We know the last quake like it here killed this coastal forest on January 26, the year 1700, at 9 p.m., 311 years ago. But when does it hit us again? Tomorrow or 200 years from now? To change your behavior in advance of a threat that may not come in your lifetime is a very hard thing to sell. Geologist Brian Atwater found layers of peat in these mud banks in Willapa Bay that point to megaquakes typically happening every three to five hundred years. But when is the next one? Is it Tuesday at nine or is it Thursday at five? And so that's, that doesn't work. We can't do that. But the GPS network does allow us to say where, you know, and it allows us, allows us to say how big. In terms of when, there is no predicting when at those timescales. Far under our feet and only discovered after Nisqually are very deep, slow-moving earthquakes that no one feels. They happen almost like clockwork, about every 14 months, and also show up on GPS. But connecting them to a violent quake on the surface remains elusive. And so that's given us a whole new window into what this fault is doing, and where that will lead in terms of predictability remains to be seen. Now, Melbourne says if you can know the size of the quake and know where those bigger quakes are going to happen, and not just on these on the coast, then you can build a building that will withstand it, and then people won't get killed, because it's not the quake that, that kills people, it's the building. And he says this science is continually moving forward, that timing remains elusive, but at least they're hoping to do if they can narrow those windows to say maybe instead of a 200-year spread, we can get it down to a century or 50 years or 25 years. That's one of the things they're working on. Live in Seattle, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. Thank you, Glenn. In a report really